Welcome to PSTV's Animation Workshop. This is a guide to hand-drawn animation. Now before we begin, let's go over the agenda. Uh, I'll introduce myself and then um, you can take a look at this WHYY video to kind of get an overview of PSTV's history and services. And really the goal for today's lesson is to learn how to use animation tools and to learn the basics of frame-by-frame frame animation. Now here is me with short hair. My name is Judy Tai. I'm a recent graduate from Morgan College of Art and Design. I'm a Philadelphia native, Go Central 274, and I love developing games on the side. Here are the things you will need. A drawing tablet. Wacom and Huion are brands. They're uh, manufacturers of drawing tablets. You can get one as cheap as $50 used or get one with a screen and those are usually more expensive. And you will also need some animation software. Uh, today we'll be using Pencil 2D, but um, the other softwares that you can get that is free is OpenTunes and Blender. Uh, those are two very different animation softwares. Uh, Blender is actually a 3D modeling program, but it's kind of viewed as a Swiss Army knife um, in the art world, so you can take a look at that. And if you don't have animation software or you don't have access to a drawing tablet, you can always just use paper and pencil with a sticky notepad, or you can just use your mouse with these softwares. It is a, a little bit more difficult to use your mouse uh, because with animation you're, you're going to be drawing a lot. So drawing with your mouse can be less ideal, but it is doable. All right, moving on to animation tools. Um, firstly, I would like to say that these tools that you see with the brush and eraser, fill tools, selection tools, uh, those are actually very common across multiple um, animation softwares, but the images you see on the right, they are little snippets taken from Pencil 2D's user interface. So again, we'll be, we'll be using Pencil 2D today. Hello, I'm here to show you how to download and install Pencil 2D. Um, I look a little bit different because I'm recording on a different day, just to add some extra things that I might have missed in my original recording, but let's get to it. I'm going to look up Pencil 2D, and we see Pencil2D.org comes up. I'm just going to click on that, and we're going to download now. And you can pick whatever version that you have. I have Windows 10, and I'm running a 64-bit machine so this is the link that I uh, downloaded it from you'll get a zip file and essentially um, once that is done downloading you're going to uh, you're going to extract everything on that zip file so let's see here I'm closing all of my video editing stuff show and folder double click it to get it out and then these are the files for it and what you're gonna do is I think you don't have to install it okay so what I would do is either drag it to the desktop or what you will do is I do a control X or command X um, if you're on Mac I don't know how it's gonna install on Mac so just bear with me <laughs> And what you'll want to do is you want to go down to your PC, into your hard drive, and go down to Program Files. Now, if you, if you downloaded the 32-bit version because your computer is 32-bit, then you want to put it in Program Files x86. If you downloaded the 64-bit version and you're on a 64-bit machine, on Windows, you know, Windows 7, 8, or 10, then you want to go in regular program files, and I'm just going to go in here, and you're going to cut this, Control X, and paste it into your program files. Um, and you will need administrators' um, rights to be able to modify anything in your program files because those are considered system files. So if you are an admin of your computer, you'll be able to do that. 
Otherwise, you should be able to just, you know, put it somewhere else and then um, go inside of that folder. You see, I already have Pencil 2D in my program files, so you'll go down and you'll see an executable file, and that is how you can open up the program. All right, let's get to it. Uh, I have Pencil 2D open, as you can see here, and we're just going to go over the basic animation tools. So um, your tools is are located in the top left corner here. You see you have tools. And then below it, you have the options for the tools. So right now, I am using the pencil tool. The, sheet, the keyboard shortcut for that is N. And I am using a drawing tablet. So you can see I have very fluid strokes here. Um, but pencil tool is, is really really basic. It's just a consistent width throughout. In the options you can turn on pressure so you can get varying sizes for your pencil. Uh, the command to undo is control Z. Alright, and I'm just gonna draw something really, really quick here and then let's go to the eraser tool. Now the eraser tool, the keyboard shortcut for that is E. And um, the eraser tool is kind of weird because when you start erasing, you can actually kind of tell that the, the, by default, use feather and the options will be on. And when that is on, you can kind of like feather your erasing. So it feels like a real eraser. Um, personally, I don't really like it, um, but maybe some people do. So I like to turn it off. So I'll just uncheck that and you can erase and it also uses pressure as well so you can dis disable that also all right with the fill tool it sounds like you can just fill in shapes so i'll just draw a closed shape there and then go to our fill tool which is the paint bucket tool uh short keyboard shortcut k okay and we, if you click in an area, it will just fill it. So it doesn't do a great, great job here. Um, as you can see, it's leaving a lot of artifacts around the edges of our shape. And that is because when you use the pencil, you can see that it has a lot of little pixels. It's, it's anti-aliasing. It's softening these pixels on the edges to make it seem like a much smoother shape. But that is okay. Um, the fill tool, you'll probably be using it a lot to color your animations. Um, and then you'll have to clean up the edges for that. Okay, so the next set of tools we have is the selection tool. And up here in the top left, we have a little rectangular, looks like a little, a little dotted rectangle, right? And the keyboard shortcut for that is V. And what you can do is you can drag on your canvas to select a square. And by default, um, you can move the selection box around to fine tune your selection. And if you wanted to move something, you can press Alt to kind of confirm that this is what you want to select. And then you can drag to move that selection. Now, anything that is inside of the selection and inside of the layer that you're working on uh, will move with that selection box. So keep that in mind. It's very useful if you want to move some stuff around. Okay. All right. So next up, we're going to talk about layers. Now, on the very bottom here, you have your timeline window. And uh, when you first load up Pencil 2D, it's going to be very small. Uh, what you can do is you can hover over this top border here, and you see a little icon change. It looks like two arrows and a line through it. You can drag that and bring this timeline window up. And that will give you a bigger view of the timeline, timeline uh, window. Right? 
So we have our layers in the bottom left here. We have bitmap layer, vector layer, and camera layer. Uh, for now, we're just going to focus on the bitmap layer. So I'm actually going to, I think, delete this layer by pressing this minus sign here. We're going to remove that. All right. And just focus on the bitmap layer. Okay, so I wanted to talk about the differences between a keyframe and a frame. A frame is what we've been making so far. You go into the timeline, you press the plus sign to create a frame, and then um, you can fill in that frame with anything that you want. And you can swap between frames and go forward and backwards and do everything that you can do in animation. A keyframe, however, is a uh, is more conceptual. It's it's more of a an idea. Um, keyframes are your more important frames. They are the frames that have higher importance in your animation. They are um, the frames that you generally fill out first. They contain the different poses of your animation. So. Keyframes are frames, but not all frames are keyframes. And in other animation software um, or other programs that uses keyframes, like Adobe Premiere, um, when you make a keyframe and you make another keyframe, um, the program will automatically tween in between those frames, so you don't need to do every single frame. So yeah, I hope that explains the differences between keyframes and frames, and let's move on. Alright. <laughs> okay, and to add layers, you can press the plus sign here to add a layer. You can choose what type of layer you want to add. I'll add a new bitmap layer. Call it bitmap layer 2. Now we have two layers. And if you see on the right here, we have this slider that we can slide around. And inside of each of these layers, we have a little box which represents a keyframe that contains your drawing or whatever um, information you have it contain. So in bitmap layer we have a keyframe here um, but in bitmap layer 2 we have nothing so how about we fill it to kind of show you the concept of layers. I'm gonna go up to my color box on the top right change my color to something like red and I'm going to increase my brush width and I'm going to draw something and this this will draw right on top of what we have here so I'm just gonna kind of scribble something in here to show you the concept of layers um, now bitmap layer 2 uh, contains that red right we can move or drag our layers below so I'm going to enable that. So these little dots here allows you to hide or show layers. But I moved bitmap layer 2 below bitmap layer, our, our default one, and now the red is behind our black. So you can kind of use layers to kind of, you know, layer stuff in front or behind, on top, below, do whatever you want with them. They're really powerful. Um, really powerful tool to use. All right? So that is the basics of layers. With um let's let's focus on the timeline now. All right. So we have these keyframes here. And what you can do is I'm going to delete bitmap layer 2. I'm just going to press the negative sign, delete it. We only have one layer and I'm actually going to uh select this entire thing and then I'm going to delete it if I can. Maybe not. Maybe I have to erase it manually. Let's do that. Now with the bitmap layer we have a keyframe here and we can draw something in that keyframe. And I'm just gonna, let's see here, do something pretty small. Let's still red, okay, change it back to black. Alright, we'll draw a circle. We can try to do something here. So here's a circle, right? And then when we press plus sign, it'll kind of clear what we have. But if we can, we can click back 
see where frame one is to see what was in there. So our circle is still there, but in the second frame, we don't see anything because we don't have onion skin on. So to show onion skin, and the concept of onion skin is that um, the skin of an onion is very translucent, so you can actually see through it and see what's behind it. So to turn on onion skin, we have previous frames and next frames. And what I'll do is click on these two icons so we can see what is behind and what is in front. And I'll also turn on onion skin color red for everything that's behind our frame. And then for everything that's in front, we're going to make it blue. So we have a clear indication of what comes next and what comes behind our frame. So, all right. Here's what we got. I'm just going to um, erase what I have here. And we're going to do frame one is this. And then frame two is this. And then frame three, so we're just going to keep going. And then we're going to make an animation like this. All right. You can kind of keep going here. It's getting bigger and bigger and as you can see you can actually draw outside of the canvas to draw beyond the bounds and if we were to play this animation using these uh, play buttons down here you can see we are getting something the animation goes through like that and we can also loop it and that will automatically loop all of the available keyframes that you have all right now with layers, you can do something like add a background layer or add um, another way to control a specific part of your animation, but you don't want it to be on the same layer. And the timeline tool is, is pretty powerful. Uh, Pencil 2D is pretty basic as well. So if you want something more powerful, definitely check out those other softwares that I mentioned in the presentation. So I think that goes over our um, tool explanation. Uh, let's head back to our main monitor here. Hey, so the last tool that I failed to mention, and I'll, I'll uh, go through it now, is the frames per second. So your frames per second, also called FPS, is how many frames play within a second. So this actually controls the speed of your animation. Um, basically, you'll see it down here. It says 12 FPS, and you can increase it to go higher. Uh, typically, you'd want to do either 12 FPS or 24 FPS or um, 6 FPS when you're when you're really getting into animation. Um, so yeah, most things you see on TV is at 24 FPS, and then most things you will animate will either be 6 or 12 FPS. So yeah, I hope that helps. Okay, so to continue with this workshop, we're going to talk a little bit about the principles of animation, and there's 12 of them. Um, a long time ago, when animation was starting to become a real thing, uh, animators had to kind of be able to explain how to animate to other people that wanted to learn how to animate. So these are the 12 principles in animation that kind of came about that uh, long, long conversation. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I can't go over all of the 12 principles of animation because um, it's t it'll take too long and we're really just kind of skimming the very surface of animation. So for now, I'm just going to talk about three of them, okay? So first, we have squash and stretch, arcs, straight ahead, or pose to pose animation. So those are the three principles that I'll be going over today. And First, we're going to look at squash and stretch. I'm going to turn on my video now. All right. So with squash and stretch, it's kind of a way to um, really show the form of your your character or whatever you're animating to to kind of indicate that they're alive and that 
they have volume and that they have weight. So squash and stretch, right? So this an, an, this example here, uh, you can see that this character picks up their belly, right? And as they're picking it up, the <laughs> the parts under their hands is what's being stretched, right? So you can see, I'm just going to show my cursor here. Whatever is in here is going to be stretching, so it gets longer and thinner. And whatever is being squashed gets wider and shorter. So that is part of the squashing and stretching. And when they release that, it all drops to the bottom, right? So the bottom part is getting squashed while the top part is getting stretched. And this is really the um, biggest example of squash and stretch. That entire top part of his body is being stretched so much because the bottom is so heavy and the bottom part is being squashed a lot. So we see this long and flat shape here. Next up we have straight ahead and pose to pose. This is a concept that I will need to explain in Pencil 2D so I'll do that in a moment but basically straight ahead and pose to pose um, describes two different approaches to animating. So straight ahead is basically when you're animating from one frame to the next, to the next, and to the next. And pose to pose is that you're setting specific frames to be specific poses and then you're filling the frames that's between those keyframes. So I'm actually going to show an example of that now. All right, we are back in Pencil 2D, and I'll be showing the difference between uh, straight ahead animation and pose to pose animation. So um, I started a new uh, document here, so everything is all clean, and we even have our vector layer back. But I'll just focus on the bitmap layer. I'm gonna make, um, I'm going to do something similar to what I did before and make some circles and this is kind of straight to, this is straight a, straight ahead um, animation so I'm going to make a line here and I'm going to add a keyframe and my onion skin settings is still on so that's good. So right now I am doing straight ahead animation and what you'll see here is that I'm going straight ahead. I'm not really thinking about uh, how this can be timed. I just know that if I want something really fast, I'll give it more length. If I wanted something really slow, I'm going to use little motions instead. So this is straight ahead animation. All right. Alright, so I'm going to put this on loop and we're going to see how this looks. Yeah, and that is straight ahead animation. You're just going frame by frame from start to finish. Alright, so um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete this bitmap layer because now I want to show um, pose to pose animation. So I have a keyframe at 1. Hi, so I wanted to talk about the differences between a keyframe and a frame. A frame is what we've been making so far. You go into the timeline, you press the plus sign to create a frame, and then um, you can fill in that frame with anything that you want. And you can swap between frames and go forward and backwards and do everything that you can do in animation. A keyframe, however, is, a, is more conceptual. It's, it's more of a an idea. Um, keyframes are your more important frames. They are the frames that have higher importance in your animation. They are um, the frames that you generally fill out first. They contain the different poses of your animation. So keyframes are frames, but not all frames are keyframes. And in other animation software um, or other programs that uses keyframes, like Adobe Premiere, 
um, when you make a keyframe and you make another keyframe, um, the program will automatically tween in between those frames. So you don't need to do every single frame. So yeah, I hope that explains the differences between keyframes and frames and let's move on. So I'm just gonna make a circle here. And then I know probably at frame six, I want something to be here. And then I know at frame 12 or frame 13, I want something, I'm gonna increase the frames here. I want something up here. And then probably a little bit later, frame 26, I want something <coughs> Right here. All right, so I'm I'm making poses for each of these. So it starts here, ends up down here, up here, and then back down. And these are the poses. So now, what I can do is I can make the in between frame. So I'll make a new keyframe in here, just insert it, and then I'm just gonna quickly start filling in these. All right, and I can just kind of fill it in here. Start a new keyframe there. Okay, yep, this goes in right in here. And then it goes, zooms in here. Okay. And then it goes up. I'll make a new keyframe here. Goes in like that. Make a new keyframe here. Goes in like that. And then another one here. And I'm just I'm just filling in what I have already. And we'll see what this looks like in a moment. Alright. Um Okay. Well, you kind of get the idea is that you make you make the poses and then you fill in the gaps, right? So let's take a look at what this looks like. All right. So we have our main poses. It goes it starts from the top, goes down, back up, back down again, and then we're we filled in what's in between. So, um, very successful animators will know how to use both. Um, straight ahead animation can feel a lot more obviously straightforward and pose to pose requires a little bit of planning um, but if you know how to use both of them you'll kind of be able to combine the two techniques together during your animation process so okay so the very last principle of animation that I'm going over today is arcs so arcs kind of denotes um, the general shape of the movement that you want to create. So we have an example here. It's kind of showing uh, what to do and what not to do. On the left, the arc is very fluid. It's a smooth curve that goes through. And these little X's that you see in between the hands kinds of shows um, where to fill in those frames. So we have our keyframes, which is the hands that is being shown. And then we have little X's that kind of show like this is where the in-between frames should be. Um, so the first one is very fluid. It's curvy. It, it clearly shows the movement. And on the right, we have an example where it seems more jagged. The, it kind of goes um, it's kind of going in a straight line and then another straight line and then another straight line. So, uh, <laughs> with movement, right, you have a fluid, right, a fluid motion. And then with the other example, you have something like, like a straight line and it's very, very jagged. You'll, you'll start to notice it more when you start to get more exaggerated movements and it's using straight lines instead of curvy lines and it feels more choppy instead of smooth so when you're planning out your animation and you're planning out your motion 
you want to use arcs, smooth curves to clearly show the direction and the movement of your animation and not using uh, primarily straight lines. All right, now that we have kind of the basics of animation down, we, we have uh, an idea of what the principles of animations are and we know the basic animation tools and how to use them, we're going to animate something together. I'm going to animate a bouncing ball and the bouncing ball is kind of like the quintessential beginner's assignment in animation. It, it really uh, challenges you to get it right, right, and to use everything that you know to get it right. So I'm going to make sure I have a bitmap layer here and we have our frames and our onion skin enabled and we have a pencil tool selected. All right. And what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to make another bitmap layer and we're going to plan this out. I'm not going to use straight ahead animation. Instead, I'm going to use pose to pose. And instead of kind of uh, trying to, you know, eye out the motions or to, you know, mentally do gymnastics in my head to figure out how the motion is going to look like, we're going to use arcs to plan it out. So I have my bitmap layer. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, and this is going to be our background layer. I'm actually going to choose a really light color for this so it doesn't get in our way. And um, for this, I'm going to have an idea of a ground here, right? And then that's the ground. And now I want something to start like up here. And it's going to bounce down here. And then it's going to bounce out like that. And maybe we want it to do something different where it's like a parabola. I'm using some math terms here. So there's that's a parabola. It bounces and then we're going to get a smaller parabola here. Right? Maybe an even smaller one. And then it bounces out like that. Really bouncy ball. Okay, we kind of see how the motion is looking like. Okay. All right. So um, we have, you know, marks to show where the tops should be. Then we have marks to show where the, the bottoms or the impacts of the ball should be. So um, I'm actually going to also time out my animation here, right? So if I were to start at this very beginning and I want it to show here I want it to kind of start slow and then it gets really fast so in order to show that change in speed that acceleration we're gonna have a lot of frames in the beginning and less frames towards the end right because if you have a lot of frames together it, it kind of feels very slow. You have a lot of frames. It has to get through all of those frames to get through one motion. If you have less frames, it'll go through those frames a lot faster in that short amount of time. So we're going to do that here, right? So I'm just going to kind of mark out where I want my important points are going to be. So I want something to go slow. So go slow here. Maybe get a bigger gap. Maybe get a bigger gap. Maybe get a bigger gap here. And then because it, it's like shooting forward, we're going to get a bigger gap here and then it gets slower as it gets to the top. Right? I'm even going to have like more extra frames here, extra frames. And then we're going to get it bigger and then it gets bigger and then it shoots all the way down here. Okay. And then it's going to shoot back up. And then it gets slower, so the gaps get smaller, and smaller, and then it gets bigger again, right? So I've kind of marked out where I want my animations to be, so I can actually kind of begin uh, animating. I've, I don't, I've got it planned out. So I'm going to switch to the layer that's on top here. And um, I'm using spacebar to pan around, by the way, just so you know. Um, Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna use I'm gonna change my color to black and I'm gonna start on frame one. It's gonna be right around here. It's like 
not in the canvas, but uh, that's okay. This is really just for practice. So it's moving, all right? And then I'm gonna make a new layer. And this one is like that. So here, we're gonna go frame by frame. So it feels like straight ahead animation, but because we've, we've actually planned it out already, it's, it's using a combination of both pose to pose and animation. So it's going to go like that. So I'm going to go make another frame and it's going to get faster and faster. So I'm going to do that and make a new frame. And it's, it's actually starting to um, accelerate here. So I'm going to do a little bit of squashing, right? So it's like really circular at the very top and then I'm squashing it so it's actually stretching and then um, once it hits this bottom here it's like completely flat here. Alright. Then it's going to shoot up. I'm going to make it oblong. I'm going to stretch it out. I'm going to continue stretching it out. And then it gets slower so I'm going to make it a little bit more circular and then circular and then another circle for our ball and it's gonna focus on this all right and it's gonna get faster so i'm gonna stretch it just a little bit Okay, and then it, it's going to hit the ground, so I'm going to squash it even more, alright, and then it's going to shoot back up, so I'm going to stretch it. Keep it stretched. I have to kind of remember how big it is on my screen so I don't get any accidental uh, size changes. The ball should be a consistent size throughout the animation, but its volume will be shifted whether or not it's being squished, stretched, and squashed. So now it's gonna accelerate down here. So. This is it's going to appear outside of our frame, so I'm just going to, it's, it's okay, I'm just going to practice. Alright, so we have something going on, right? You can kind of see how it looks like when it's moving, so I'm going to turn off our, uh, our planning um, layer, and we're just going to turn on loop, and then we're going to see how this looks. All right. All right, look at that. It accelerates down, it, it hits the ground and squishes, and then it shoots right back up, and it gets slow at the very top of that arc. So that is looking very good. I am very happy with my animation. <laughs> OK. All right, so now you've created an animation, you want to share it with all your friends and you know share it to the world. Uh, and what I'm going to do is go up here and we're going to save it and it'll tell you, you know, where you want to save it. I'll save it right on the desktop. It'll save it as a pencil format, a .pclx and that is uh, the file extension for Pencil 2D. So I'm going to call this Bouncing Ball. All right. And we want to export this. So what we need to do is go down to File, Export. And what I like to do is an animated GIF. Uh, I want to put this on the web. So using an animated GIF would be perfect for that. I can share it on Twitter. <laughs> so I see here is that it's being saved right to my user. I'm just going to change it back to the desktop. And I'm going to name this bouncing ball. Great. Save. 
camera. We're doing the camera layer. That's fine. And then you can, this is the default width and height of our animation. And we have it, we have uh, some additional settings to set the start and end frames uh, to pick what segment of our animation we want to keep. And um, I'm going to have this loop. So that's, that's pretty good. All right, I'm going to press OK. And it's generating a GIF. And that's really fast. So I'm going to open the file location. And we see here we have a bouncing ball GIF. And we can actually open this. And there it is. That's our animation as a GIF. And you can upload this to a social media website and it'll loop. And you can show the world how much you've learned in animation. So before I leave you all today, here are some additional resources that you can look at if you want to kind of expand on what we've learned today. Um, you can look at TJ Free. He's a really cool guy. He's on YouTube. He makes a lot of tutorials on how to use a different animation software. So you can learn Open Tunes from him or you can learn more Pencil 2D from him as well. Alan Becker has a really great series on animation principles, so you can uh, learn about all 12 animation principles instead of, you know, just leaving today with the three that we went over. And yeah, I would I would start with these two. Um, they can certainly uh, bring you more depth to what we've learned today. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for attending or watching <laughs> uh, this PSTV animation workshop and hopefully I get to see you some more with the other workshops that I'm working on. Alright, bye bye <laughs>